This message is meant for <clears throat> for my clients that are directly involved. It's for the dealers that are involved. It's for you know my friends uh, that are going to be affected, my former employees, people in the watch industry that are going to be directly affected by my actions. Uh, it's it's eating me alive. You know, I drink every night just to be able to go to, just to be able to go to sleep. Um, I've lied to my employees. I've lied to my clients. I've lied to my friends. I've lied to my peers. And it was all keeping up this facade. It was <clears throat> not being, not being willing to admit that I'd made mistakes very early on. You know, I'll admit it. I've, I, I got a little taste of success and Never wanted to forget that feeling. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Dima Podcast. It's Neela. And it is Adis. What's up, family? What is good? Talk to me. Okay, Niels. <laughs> Anthony Ferrer and the Timepiece Gentleman. There's a lot that I want to kind of uncover about this. But first and foremost, I want to put this on record that I, I genuinely feel bad for the guy. I genuinely feel bad for the him and all of the people that he kind of scammed. Because essentially, I could have been one of those people that he scammed, right? So I have a personal relationship in the sense where I called Anthony for a watch. I'm really into watches, right? I keep all my watches in the bank, in the safe, so nobody can really say none to me, you feel me? Or pull up on me type. But I'm into watches. I've been into watches for quite a long time. And uh, I usually, I have a collection. You know, you know this. You've seen them, et cetera, et cetera. They're my babies. But there was one watch in specific that I wanted to sell, right? Um, I wanted to sell this watch and I wanted to, you know, I bought it at, you know, market value from the store. I bought it from Rolex and uh, I kind of, you know, just wanted to get rid of it. It wasn't really me, right? So... Um, and usually when the ADs, when authorized dealers call you, it's like kind of an offer you can't refuse because they don't really call everybody. If you get that call from the AD, you go and buy that watch because that watch it's like is like a Birkin. Yeah, like a Birkin, right? You don't deny it type. Mm -hmm. So I got this watch. I loved it. I, I, I didn't even wear it once. I think I wore it out of the store, brought it in, um, went to the bank, deposited in my, uh, my deposit box or whatever it's called whatever so um and then after that, i never wore it so then i call him and i'm like you know what and you know ad's they really frown upon you selling your watch right as soon as you get it and it, it just it wasn't me right so i was like let me make my rounds and see what i can get for it so i follow anthony and the timepiece gentleman on youtube i'm subscribed to their account whatever I, i'm big into the watch game so there's all of these players like the romans the luxury bazaars the tpts the, the people that do really good business, but at the time, I figured the timepiece gentleman was like, you know, a real deal, like gray market dealer. I call them and they kind of give me the runaround, right? It's a typical sales job. You want to make money. They want to make money on these pieces, etc. So they super lowball me, right? And they give me this weird thing. They're like, you can send me the watch. And if the watch checks out, we can then wire you. You know, I'm within, you know, uh, the same state as them. We're in the Bay Area. They're in L.A. type stuff. So I figured, like, if I were to move forward, I'd probably want the wire first. And I'd probably go and visit them, you know, to make sure everything checks out. And I've never really sold any watches. I keep all my watches. So... It's just the phone call that I was on, like, it was really weird. And, like, he's known to, like, record phone call conversations for his YouTube videos. So, automatically, it gave me red flags. I'm like, this is probably recorded. And, like, he's giving me the runaround and kind of lowballing me and telling me to send the, send the watch first. And from the videos that I saw on his YouTube, randomly, watches would get lost in the mail. Like, there were multiple videos where he's calling and talking to clients and saying, like, Watches have been lost, which granted happens, right? So I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. But like, moral of the story, I genuinely feel bad for all parties involved. So he comes out with a video and a lot of people are telling uh, people in the comments, other YouTube videos that this guy is, is known to have scammed people. He has a criminal background and don't trust him. 
But like from the outside looking in, like you're looking at his YouTube channel and it looks like he's legit. But like you and I both know that sometimes it's not all of what meets the eye and people can have ulterior motives. Yeah, how do people think they're gonna get away with it at some point? It's like to what extent do they think or how far do they think they could take it, right? Like it happens in, not to that degree, cause like it happens a lot in like within the marketing space of like, for example, for me, the beauty industry where people will do anything for the, for the bag essentially, which I understand, get yours, but you know, it's not authenticated for the most part. And like, I feel like you see a lot of like fake advertising just because you can, it's become so obvious in a sense where you know, this person's being cashed out to just uh, promote something. So it's not genuine. And it's like, I don't think people understand that like eventually people can catch on like it's very visible it's 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 not it's like messed up actually like a lot of people like invest and put in their money this is their personal savings these are like their livelihood that people mess with that's actually really messed up the industry is so corrupt it is and when when money gets involved people get money hungry and anthony and said this in the video and greedy and he said this he was like you know i got a taste of that successful life and i just didn't want to let it go and he bought cars he bought jewelry and like you know for me i'm like a pi i'm like a private investor i'm putting pieces together right even after our phone call conversation i'm like I don't trust this guy, bro. Especially with like 50, 60 G's type. You feel me? So it's like he and he documented these things, right? He has a really interesting criminal background, which again, people get into some that's their lives. Unfortunate situations happen, so I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. But like there was a situation where he had an armed robbery, right? Where they he was robbed at his home, whatever. They stole a suitcase or a briefcase with a bunch of watches, upwards to hundreds of thousands of dollars. Insurance right? claim. Insurance claim, mm -hmm. right? We know these things exist. Yeah. And it's like, when I put the piece to, pieces together, I'm just like, okay, this makes a lot of sense in the worst ways. And also his business partner, Marco, which is decided to split up with him about a year back and make his own kind of thing with uh, Grand Caliber. It's this other, you know, gray market dealer. And they were like, you know what? We're going to, you know, separate ourselves from the timepiece gentleman. So I was like, another red flag. Like if you're doing good business and you have a great business partner, right? And I know business partners, like my dad's business partner, they've been with each other for years and years and years. And there's no chance of splitting up, right? God forbid, because they do good business together and they're loyal and they, they do good. They do right business. So I'm like, that's a red flag. Why would they come out with a statement that we are separating ourselves from this person? He so, probably saw or knew, you know, he didn't want to get involved. 100%. Right? It yeah. has to be. Absolutely. So Anthony comes out and he's like, look, I'm $5 million in debt. Here's what happened. I was using clients' money, investors' money for my own ex extravagant lifestyle. I was blowing money left and right. And now I'm in the hole. I don't know what to do. But he did say that he's not going to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, bankruptcy, which essentially would like wipe your hands clean. Yeah, your credits, you would essentially whatever. But like you do kind of escape the debt that you're in. And I don't really know how that works exactly. But he said that I'm going to right this wrong however which way I can, which like kudos to him. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if he's just a con man or or weaseling his way out of this, right? Because I like, hate these like confession videos though. Like yeah. they always gotta come out and like right their wrongs and yeah, I messed up, I cried, I have to drink every night to go to sleep. I'm depressed. I stole your money, but I'm depressed. It's like, you know what? You kinda put in that position. You gotta go face the crowd now because you people over. That's not nice. And people can like be out of like their mortgage. Yeah. Like this is real it doesn't deal. If it's ten dollars or to hundred thousand dollars like it's people's money that don't belong to you and you gave them false hope and it's like you literally are in shabakery now because of your own doing you put yourself in this position dude it's like i how do you feel bad for that i can't feel bad for that i'm sorry I don't, and it's not just him it happens all the time i not too long ago we talked about um, i mean the ace family i take i i immediately start thinking about them too because they're they're, they're somewhat in the past have been like and to be honest i haven't heard about them seen them in a minute but um they were always like torn apart for like being scammers or like Catherine made her beauty line scammed austin sold out an arena scammed the money like right they always get targeted but it's like maybe that is the case who knows it's like you do this to yourself and you put yourself in this position and the thing is when you deal with other people especially their money you're bound to get caught like if it's amongst yourself to yourself with your own money you can probably escape it from yourself but like i don't think people understand like how far do you think you can take it you can't the lines add up eventually
Yeah, and it, the crazy part is, is like he's the type of person that if anyone really messes with him, he'll fire back crazily. Like he's made videos following up with other dealers, etc., about a fake watch, etc., stuff like that. And like, there's this guy named Watch Nicholas that has been making videos about him for years, telling him like, do not invest with him. He's a scammer. Look at his history. He has like seven DUIs, etc. Which again, I feel for the guy. You know, he's going through. A, I, I heard that he got another DUI recently. He's been plagued by these DUIs and, you know, you're, he's putting people at risk and these are lives at risk, especially when you're driving and stuff. So I, I do feel for both. But like, that's why he's in a dark hole, you know, that's why, though, like dirty money, no matter how it's made, will never end well. Like, I believe in karma and I believe in like the non-ethical way of making money. And yeah, it's fast money. It's quick money. As fast as it comes, that's how quick it can go too. that's the thing. And then it always ends up in like having to you have nothing left or you have to use all that money to get yourself out of the chaos that you got yourself in. Because again, it's just not, in my opinion, clean money that's coming in because good business, clean business will keep it coming in a very moderate way where it's like sustainable and you don't, you're not stressed making money. Of course, any business is going to stress you out, but I'm saying like, you don't have to constantly think ahead and plan ahead and like think of like repercussions constantly because you know, you're not doing anything wrong. There's always some sort of train on, like receipts and things like that where you can eventually like you know defend or like save yourself whereas if you're doing things unethically it's bound to bite you and how is it not a hundred percent yeah and people don't forget you know yeah. what i mean it's like for me it's like you have to have values especially when you're making money and you're in business and at the same time it's like you know if you're worried about the quick buck that's gonna come bite you in that in the long run right yeah. you want something sustainable like you could be a drug dealer right and you could make millions of millions of dollars right like asap rocky if i'd be a drug dealer, i'd be the best <laughs> but i can't i i can't do the time you don't yeah. do the crime you yeah. know what i'm saying exactly so it's like you feel me if i can't and i know that it's like you have a, a very fast like lambo ferrari money women whatever but it's like what happens in five six seven eight years that actually happens i guess with younger generations also that i see at least in the social media influencer community that get rich really quick and like buy all the things really quick. It doesn't necessarily have to be dirty money, but it is essentially quick money that was made, you know, overnight because one video went viral, which is great. Love that for you. But they don't have the credibility or like the the proper strategy on how to one make the money, save the money and make it last versus like you blow it all up out of proportion then you're kind of caught. And then to sustain that lifestyle that you've now created for yourself, having to make money the wrong way because you're in Shabakri and you own mortgage here or rent here and a car payment there. And it's like the higher the, the you know, the higher you go, it's like the, it, does, it doesn't get easier. The more money you make, it doesn't get easier. But it's like, how are you equipped to sustain it? And a lot of people are not. Yeah, and they're, those they can't people. handle that lifestyle. A lot of people cannot handle that lifestyle, dude. And then what does that lead to? Mental sickness, a, a, abuse, um, addiction. Like we see it happen with content creators all the time. All the time. Battling these, like it's all stemmed from the chaos that was brought to begin with. And and to be honest with you, like money is, it changes people. It's dirty. It, the whole general idea, it, it brings comfort and like sustainability to live a life and like take care of yourself and your families. But it's messy. You know, like it, it makes it, it makes people evil. It does. It does. And alongside of like feeling because the main issue is like all of the people that got burned and I could have been one of that. And yeah. like 50, 60 grand for me is a lot. Money. you know what i mean and like you have to work a lot a long time to make that type of money so it's like these people are scammed out of millions of dollars but like what i took out of that right is like i genuinely feel bad for bro like i i feel like he's a person that can't escape his own demons and he's he's digging his own hole right yeah, you because think like, he has no awareness of what he was doing no no he does have awareness and don't judge me when i say like i feel bad for him because at the end of the day i shouldn't right because it's like I would have been one well, of not your about scam yeah. person, right? Yeah. But it's like, when I saw his like confessional or whatever he came out, I was like, this guy is a victim of his own demise. He just cannot escape his vices. It's like, why, like if you had like two, three DUIs, why drink and drive again? Why, if you've gone through this whole criminal past, you've been in jail twice, like you've said, prison twice, like you've said, 
why put yourself in a position to go back? That's what I'm saying. So why do you feel bad for him? He can't escape it. He he can if he wanted because to. Because I, I feel like, you know, and Most I know... Most people pe- will play the victim in their own story for so long, though. How many videos of confessions crying have you seen, though, I used to be real. That's it's very true. easy to get in front of a camera and That's cry. I'm sorry for taking all your money. I have a drinking problem. I and God forbid, like, no judgment to addicts and no judgment to, like, you know, real world problems. But... In that space, it is very easy to be condescending and manipulating. Like, and I, I think I, he is. Yeah, I think he is you know, being like, manipulating. Kind I of mean, sort it, of. Yeah, I don't know, I, bro. I think that he feels bad because he got caught, but I also think that he was very aware of what he was doing and the consequences that they were that were going to come from it. Like, how are you not? That's true. You're if literally you're stealing thousands. people's money, or you're you're tell, giving true. them false promises, and you're telling them to expect X amount of money for a watch that they gave you to sell. You sell it, or you get rid of it, or you do what with it, and you, they never get their money. No, that's not okay. I don't care if it's a millionaire or not. Like. Yeah. It's not, it has nothing to do with you. That doesn't belong to you. And then you create this entire environment of like this respected, just like you did. You called out, you called this guy because you thought he was the guy. He has a watch. He knows his shit. And so he creates this environment of like trustworthy and like, oh, I'm that guy. I'm your guy. And then he f- fumbles and steals your money. That's not right. He's on a public platform, like making money off of people who think that he's legitimate. He's not. I don't feel bad. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't feel bad either. <laughs> I mean, no, you can I blow it. your seventy thousand dollars of yours, and yes, that is a lot of money. And again, it don't matter if it's ten or a hundred thousand. It's it's not his money. That's true. He's running a false business, and now he has to come because someone probably got he got caught somewhere or the other. Now he has to go give an apology. I wish you the best, sir. I hope you get out of that debt. Debt sucks, yeah. and hopefully out of that darkness. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, where you ate, where you where you eat. That's true, Neil. Like, I don't feel bad, bro. It happens all the time. It's not just him. It's a, it's the industry. Like, the industry is dirty. It makes you messy, and it makes you hungry and greedy. And you see people advertising horrible things to young kids. It's rude because they're getting a fat check for it. Not right. I don't like it. Me neither, man. Not money like will it. make you do a lot of weird things, and I hope yeah. all the people that got scammed get their money back, and I hope that he gets the, you know, this is something psychological, and I hope he gets the help he needs, and I hope there are good people in his corner to kind of point him in the right direction. But, brother, you owe $5 million, and you over. So where can they find us, Niels? <laughs> YouTube.com slash the Dima Podcast, TDP. We out. We out.